In this video, we're going to discuss a very important aspect of programming, and that is variables. Variables are the small little containers that we create within our programs that hold the data that we are using, manipulating, and altering as our program executes. Now that's a very basic definition. There are much more complex definitions, but at this point in time, where we're at in learning to program, let's go ahead and keep the definition pretty simple at the moment. So they are simply containers that store the data that we will be using, manipulating, and altering as our program executes. Now in JavaScript, <clears throat> there are three different ways to create variables in order to hold the data we're going to be using in our applications. The first one is going to be the var keyword. So var, as you can probably guess, stands for variable. So whenever we use the keyword var, we're asking JavaScript, the execution environment, to set us up a variable. And then we need to provide a name that is self-explanatory, something that we will remember and something that provides us meaning as to the context and what data is being held inside the variable. So right here, if I have, let's say I am going to be storing um, my name. So I would declare var and then first name equals Tim. All right, so here we have a variable with the string Tim in it, which represents my first name. Now we gave this variable a name that's easy to remember. We know it's holding or storing the first name of some object or some person that the program is working with. And in this case, it's holding the string representation of my name, Tim, which is really an array of characters, T-I-M, which we interpret as humans to be the name Tim. So if we want to really break this down, let's kind of do, let's do a little drawing that helps us understand what's happening when we instantiate or, and then initialize a variable. So let's start out with var. So var is really, a, if you're going to think about it, it is really a series of commands all in one word. So what var does is when the JavaScript interpreter is going from top to bottom and left to right, reading each statement that we've written in our program, when it runs into var, what it's going to do is it interprets that as a series of commands where we are asking it to set up memory and prepare to store some data for us. So what var does is it goes to a big old block of memory that we have in our system. And inside of our memory, we have all of these blocks of available memory that the computer system has for us. And it is going to, based on the command we asked, it's going to go in, it's going to identify a block of memory and those blocks of memory all have an identifier. So a lot of times it's going to be a hexadecimal code depending upon the system and the, and the programming language you're using. So anyways, it's going to be some kind of number letter string. So this isn't a real one. This is just a, a, you know, a demo. So it's going to go get us a memory address. And then with that memory address, it is going to then tie it to the variable or the human readable name that we have provided that will then reference that memory location. So first name is the name of the variable that we provided. Oops, it didn't, uh, didn't want to keep it for us. Let's go ahead and try that again. So first name and first name is going to point to that memory address which came from the computer's memory. So it would be really hard in our programs to locate the data and reference the data that the computer is storing for us if we had to use these hexadecimal numbers and we had to try to remember what each one means. So in order to make programming human readable and easier, it allows us to then use a 
very descriptive human readable term that we decide on in our program to represent that memory location. Now, what happens then is with the assignment, the assignment operator, which is the equals sign, it then takes whatever is on the right side of this statement, so whatever is on the right side, it then takes that data and assigns it to the variable or the memory space that we have been allocated by the computer system to store the data that we're working with. So if we want to visualize that, over here we've got the string Tim, and then we have the equal sign. So then what happens is in our, in our code, it looks like, it looks like this is happening. Tim is being set to first name. But behind the scenes, what is happening is Tim is actually being stored in this memory location for later use. Now, of course, I'm keeping this pretty high level and pretty simplistic in order to make sure that we don't get too crazy and confuse things. So, there is a lot more to storing data in memory than this really high level. So we started out with this explanation at like the 30,000 foot, then we came down to about 15,000 feet, and we could get really, really down into how operating systems store memory, but we don't need to worry about that right now. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight into what the declaration of a variable entails and what is happening underneath at a 15,000 foot view of how that data then is stored in memory and what this first name really is. A lot of times people new to programming don't understand the first name really isn't some kind of a, a magic, black magic thing that's happening. What it is, is it is a really easy way for a human as they're writing code to remember where they're storing some data that they're going to use and manipulate and alter as their program executes. And so really all this is is our own special little name that was easy to remember for a memory location inside of computer memory where we are storing that data for later use in our program. So hopefully that helps a little bit. The other keyword that we have is let. So let's do let, and we'll say last name equals Clark. Now, as you can see, the syntax is almost identical. We're just using a different keyword here than var. We're using let. And if we read the definition here, var is a keyword that declares a variable, and then let is a keyword that declares a block scope or local variable. The important part here is var is an old way of creating variables in older versions of ECMA or ECMAScript, which is what is the, the foundation or the, or the guiding documents for all versions of JavaScript. Well, var kind of creates a variable that, that creeps through different scopes and can become global, meaning that var can be accessed pretty much anywhere in your script, no matter where it's declared. And that is because of something we call variable hoisting. And right now we're not learning about hoisting, but understand that var, we've kind of moved away from using var because a lot of times these variables will get mixed up as we start to define functions and methods because they will be accessible outside of those blocks. So what this means is that if I were to create a function, and in that function I was to define this particular variable right here, so if I was to initialize it inside this block, what this means is that within these curly braces, that creates scope. Or, in other words, all code that is within these curly braces belongs to this function and really should not be accessible outside of those curly braces. So we shouldn't be able to get to last name here, and we shouldn't be able to get to last name here, because we really only want last name inside of the scope of this function. If we were to use var here, we could get to last name out here. But by using let, 
it keeps it local to the block. So this is the block, and anything that's within the curly braces would be considered local to that block. So that's the important difference between var and let. So those are the two primary ways of creating a variable, and you'll probably use those the most. I would begin to use let as my primary way of creating variables, unless you really need to create a variable that is accessible outside of the scope in which it's defined. All right, now one important thing right here, if you look at this note, is that both let and var can be initialized with a value at the same time they're declared. In other words, here we are declaring the variable, and at the exact same time we are also using the assignment operator, that's the equals, to then assign this data to it. And if you think back to our example with our drawing, this data is then being stored. We can also declare a variable, so let's do middle name, and we can do that right there, and we don't have to assign it anything yet. And in this situation, when we declare a variable and we don't assign data to it, it ends up holding the value undefined. And what that is, is it is a word in JavaScript that lets us know that this value does not yet, or this variable does not yet have a value assigned to it. So if we were trying to do something with middle name and compare it against something or check it, we would, JavaScript would give us back undefined as its value. And if we saw undefined, we'd know that it hadn't been instantiated yet. In other words, we hadn't given it any, well, it hadn't been assigned yet, so we hadn't given it any data. So down here later on, we could take middle name and now give it a value if we wanted to. And now it has a value. It was defined or declared up here and then assigned or has had data put into it and stored down here. The other way of creating a variable is going to be using the keyword const. Now, const, as you can probably imply, means constant. And what this does is, if I have a value in my program that is never, ever, ever going to change, and I want to make sure that it doesn't get changed by the program dynamically as the program is executing, I want to declare that variable as a constant or using the keyword const. So const, let's say that in our system we're going to be using some kind of a unique identifier for a user. And we know that that unique identifier is never ever ever going to change as our program executes. And we want to verify and make sure it doesn't. And if somebody does try to change it, we want the system to throw an error or give us a warning. Then we're going to use const. So let's say that my unique identifier for this particular user is going to be that number right there. And we know it never changes while the program's executing. I want to go ahead and use const for that. So if we read this down here, read only is in the, the definition. And that means once the variable is assigned to that constant variable, or once the value is added to it, it is not allowed to change for the duration of its existence. So as long as that variable is being used and is in the executing program, JavaScript is not going to allow it to be changed. So if later on down here, I took UID and I tried to set it to a string, and then we ran this, what would happen is we would get an error back in, from JavaScript stating that we're not allowed to do that, shouldn't be doing that, and then we get an error. And the script would fail, most likely if you're using strict mode but we'll talk about strict mode another time. Now, one last thing about variables is there are different ways of naming variables. Right here, you're gonna see the fact that when we create a variable name, you'll notice that I've got a word and then another word, and I am capitalizing the first letter of the second word. <clears throat> but the first letter of the first word is actually lowercase. This type of variable naming convention is called camel case. So camel case, if you think about the humps on a camel's back, you'll see that it just starts out and then you got 
a hump. And so they call it camel case. Another way to define variables that you'll run into, so camel case is the most common in JavaScript. It's the convention that's most accepted. There is another one called snake case. And if you think about a snake, you'll see this little underscore that's between or separates the words that describes what the variable holds. And snake case is like that. So if I had a, another one and I wanted to do, you know, last name in a different way, that would right there would be snake case. Another one is Pascal case. And you'll run into it as well. It's, it's kind of a sub naming convention of camel case. Just instead of having the first letter of the first word, lowercase, the first letter of all words inside of your variable name are going to have a capital letter. So if we redid, um, let's add another one. Let maiden name, and let's use Pascal case. Maiden name equal <coughs> Smith. All right. So here we would have every first letter of every word in your variable name have an uppercase. And that is going to be your Pascal case. So I hope this helps you with variables, understanding what a variable is, how we declare it, how we assign to it, and then kind of the underlying mechanics of a variable and the fact that really all they are are little buckets to store data in and those buckets reference a memory location which is really hard for a human to understand and we give it a name that we can remember and we can use throughout our program. The other key point here is, is that when we're writing a program it's not actively executing so we actually don't know what the memory address is or is going to be for that data container that we're going to be storing information in. So really giving a human readable name serves two purposes. Number one, because the program executes dynamically and we're assigned memory dynamically by the computer, we have no idea ahead of time what memory address we're going to be allocated in order to store data. So the variable name gives us a way to have an identifier for something we don't know yet as the memory location, but it also gives us a way to refer back to data that we are going to be using, manipulating, and editing in our program that we may know ahead of time when we actually assign it when the variable gets created, but it also gives us a way to reference data that we don't quite know yet, which means later on in the program, maybe we'll get that data like we did with middle name here. We defined it, but we didn't have that data yet. And then later down in our script, we actually were provided that data. So maybe we got it from a web form, maybe we pulled it back from a database. So variables are extremely versatile and extremely important in programming because they provide us a solution for those two situations where we don't know what memory address we're going to have yet and we may be in situations where we don't have the data yet but we need to begin writing a program to manipulate that data once we get it back.